I've got a question for you. Are you the kind of person that is able to just drop everything you're doing and start all over again? Now, you're going to have to do this all by yourself, but at least it's something that you love. So imagine this, right? You're in your job, you're in career, you're succeeding, you're thriving. Um, you've been doing this for eight years. You're moving up the ladder. Uh, you're doing something you actually love. Are you the kind of person that can just drop that <laughs> uh, and start all over again? So, hey everyone, I'm Tesla Herbert, and today we're going to be talking to Eliana Sheriff, and she did exactly just that. Hey Ellie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I just did it. So, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So last year, she left a very successful TV reporter journalism career. She's been doing that for eight years, and she's now started a YouTube channel called Ellie in Space. Uh, in a period of one year, she has skyrocketed to 50,000 followers. Almost. And if you, just, <laughs> if you just watch a few of her videos, uh, you'll understand quite quickly why she's taken off, why she's special. So she has this unique ability to take a TV reporter journalism skill set, apply it with a very fun personality, covering an amazingly exciting segment, space, SpaceX, and Tesla. So I am so excited to learn more about you, Ellie. Uh, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Let's get brighter. Okay. Welcome, Ellie. How are you doing? I am great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. I'm excited for, for the Tesla shareholders meeting next week. Exactly. I saw that you got invited to that. Um, so I absolutely love your YouTube channel, Ellie. Uh, I, I can see clearly, as I mentioned earlier, how you're successfully combining this personality, your professionalism, your passion for space and technology in general. But you have this fun activities that you do it around with travel and rock climbing. <laughs> so let's get started. I, I saw one of your videos that you did last month where you were explaining why you left uh, your successful career as a TV reporter and you decided to become a YouTube uh, channel <laughs> full time. Right. Why, why did you do this? And tell us how did this all happen. Yeah. Uh, wow. That is there's there's so much involved because it was a big decision and it was hard to make. But I'm a little over two months uh, from when I had my last day in TV news, and I feel great already. It feels like like life has been a roller coaster, but very much living on my own terms and um, just being able to dedicate my all to the channel. But uh, yeah, I I had envisioned that I would keep climbing up the TV news ladder. I was the main anchor at my last job before moving here to Utah in a smaller city in Washington state. And yeah. so I moved here to be a reporter. Um, and most of the time we were alone. Uh, so we, we didn't usually have like a camera person with us. So there's, there's kind of a, a difference there between reporter and an MMJ. I was actually hired as an MMJ. So some days I would get a camera person, but most days it was just me, one man band, independent. And that's kind of been the last eight years, which I see. has been uh, great for setting me up to be independent and, you know, know how to do all this stuff on my own. But um, yeah, I, I started the channel when I was still in Washington state and I made a video about Starlink because my ex-boyfriend had ordered a Starlink, you know, beta unit and he's like, this is really new and a lot of people are going to want this and not a lot of people have it. So we should mm. make a review of it and see how it goes. Mm. And I had never even heard of Starlink. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> I made the video and it started to take off. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I've done stories throughout my career where I'd never had any prior knowledge about it. And you learn about it and then you become mm. kind of a mini expert. So I thought... If this is the the beat that the people want, you know, like some people are on crime, some people are on health, I'll be on Starlink, right? And so mm -hmm. it kind of opened up this door for um, a topic that people wanted to hear about on YouTube. And no one was dedicated talking about Starlink. So yeah. that, of course, expanded to SpaceX, which expanded to Tesla. I mean, I'm still mostly SpaceX, hence mm -hmm. Ellie and Space. That was kind of a rebranding, uh, 
I don't know, several months ago now, but I realized my name, Eliana Sheriff, is not very easy to say in passing. Hey, check out my channel. What is it? Oh, Eliana Sheriff. What? How do you spell that? You know, so Ellie in space seemed like a good, a good, easy branding. But um, yeah, how did I, why did I leave my, my job in TV news, right? A lot of people think, oh my gosh, you're on TV. What a cool career. Mm -hmm. and they're right. But a lot of things about the industry have changed in just the eight years that I've been in TV news. And I realized that my channel was really starting to succeed. And I was thinking about the channel all the time. And I'm like, I don't really want to uh, cover all these sad stories anymore if I don't have to. Um, and there's more than just that. You know, the pay really isn't great in news like I'm just not going to sugarcoat it. It's not, mm -hmm. um, the hours can be rough. You know, you, you're you usually working holidays. Uh, but I think just I was burned out from, okay, you know, there was a, a shootout between 14-year-olds and two of them are dead and go <laughs> interview the family. Okay, I can do that. And I'm pretty good at it, but I'm covering space. You know, I, I'm, I, I was taking more trips on my very limited PTO to Texas. And I'm like, dude, I have the ability to be on the forefront because we're still just at the beginning of Starship, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I don't want to be late to that party and feel like I, I don't get to be fully present and be able to, like we were saying, drop anything at a moment's notice and be at that orbital launch, right? Because that's still a big question mark. When is that going to be? Well, now that I'm full time, I have that ability to be hmm. just available anytime to do that and, and dedicate. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt you because I want to pause a bit because there's a <laughs> few points that you said that uh, I want to explore further before we move on to the you know, topic of space and others. Um, so the first one was when you explained that, you know, the reason you left the TV reporter job, one of the reasons is obviously a very complex decision was that you were covering a lot of negative uh, news. And you said something that made me actually hit me pretty emotionally when I heard you in your YouTube video about that. But you said that when you interviewed somebody about something happened to their child or family member, it stays with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it, it's like you've been, and you keep doing this for quite a bit. And you yeah. realize that, yeah, today, TV reporters, TV news, they like to sensationalize and focus on the negative. Um, so can you just tell me a little bit more about that experience of covering something that's a little bit more negative than something that's more exciting and future focused? Um, I think that you you have to realize that that is part of the job description. Like I knew mm -hmm. that 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 was what I was there for, you know, was to cover newsworthy events. And so um, it's like if you are a first responder, you have to know what you're signing mm -hmm. up for. But at a certain point, it, it becomes very taxing. Uh, and so I, it, it's kind of like a necessary part of the job, but I had another path finally, and that's the difference, right? Like mm. I thought that I was going to really chase being in the anchor chair in a big market. And that, that was my path. And that was the goal. And that was success. And all of a sudden I was like, that's not my dream anymore. And I have, you know, I, th I think a lot of people, and it makes me sad, a lot of people are working jobs that they don't like, but they don't have another option. Right. They or they don't, you know, they don't have something actively because then the channel started to bring in money, and I, you know, it's, it's still like building. But I was like, okay, I actually have a viable option here, wow. and okay. you know, I should go for it, right? Like, yeah, I would yeah. regret, I would regret, you know, not trying more than if it failed. If it fails guess what? Like you get another job. I, th there is a mass exodus in news right now. I'm mm. fairly certain I could easily get back in. I don't even know if I would want to go back just because the same yeah. issues would exist. But um, yeah, those things stay with you. And <clears throat> I just thought, why, why am I covering these things that I am kind of dragging my feet to do when, when I have created something for myself that now I have an out and it's something that I'm actually like very passionate about. So, yeah. so you said that you were actually in Washington state where I'm at. Is this really, which uh, location here? 
yeah. uh, Tri Cities. <clears throat> Tri Cities. So, Okay. Yeah. So, and then you were explaining that um, because it's a smaller market, you were expected to actually, and you were on your own, <laughs> getting out there doing these. Uh, you do the research, you do the interviews, yes. you do the. Do you, you have you have, you have a cameraman, and you're mm -hmm. like piecing everything together. Do you actually have an editor? How did you no. do these? So, things? and here's the thing: it's the mm -hmm. same thing here. This is Market Thirty. This is Salt Lake City. Is a big city. And the industry has kind of downsized and they don't have the same budget as they used to that, you know, I'm in a top market, something that I've worked, you know, over seven years to get to really grinded hard. And I'm still on my own. I'm still showing up with the camera and the tripod and having everyone that I interview say, oh, where's your cameraman? Or they got you doing this alone today? I, it got to a point where it started to drive me nuts. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am alone. Don't rub it in, you know, and it's not even like I'm lazy or something like that. But um, it, it, you know, it, it tends to look better when you have someone help you shoot it. There's a safety yeah. aspect. There was yeah. a news story that went pretty viral of a, a female reporter who was alone in the field going uh, on a live shot and she got hit by a car. Oh, my gosh. She mm -hmm. got hit by a car. She was OK, but it was like highlighting. Hey, Let's have safety in numbers, you know. So, mm -hmm. it, it and, and kind of, but at least yeah. this, right? I mean, you learn. This is with a skill that you've already doing professionally, learning right. how to do it on a professional level. Oh yeah, uh, telling a story that's number, you know, number one, and then editing. learning how to do the right shots, mm -hmm. editing. Yeah, I just watched last night. Uh, we just watched. Um, uh, Oh my gosh, <laughs> Shania Twain documentary. Okay, and it was very, very good, very inspiring because yeah. she writes her own songs. But what I didn't know was that she would do these videos, right? Music videos. She would do all the editing. Uh, wow. She would tell the people, you know, that she'd hire a director. The director would do the videos, and then she would actually edit it together. So it's like there's that power uh, for you, not only being the, you know, if you're going to do this, you might as well do the entire thing. Oh and yeah. You learn those skills, yeah. Well, you save money. It's creative control. It's, I think, one of the pluses for me as a YouTuber, covering kind of like news updates, is that I know how to turn stories quickly. I know how to like, you know, have a deadline. The beauty is that if I don't want to rush something, I don't have to. Hmm. But if there's like, you know, some breaking news development and I don't really want to be late to the party, I can edit, I can shoot it and edit it in about an hour and boom, upload it, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that I have that advantage compared to someone who's just like, I want to start a YouTube channel, but they have no editing experience. They're not fast. You know that takes years to get those <clears throat> get those skills. Sorry, yeah. I keep all right. Away. So let's go. Let's go back a little bit. So you're doing this career. You are a journalist, TV reporter, yeah. and then you said you had a YouTube channel already going, and then it, but it was the space uh, the Starlink episode that made you realize, hey, this is something I'm excited yeah. about, and something could take off. So uh, if you and look then at you were doing this compare at the same time as your career. yes. Yeah, for well, and that was also one of the other reasons because I was starting to get burned out. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm really like making sure to be consistent on my channel. But with that, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm kind of working two jobs and yes. I don't really want to do this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to give up the channel. I mean, it was, I was so dedicated to the channel, even from the very early days that I was searching for another TV news job in the middle of the pandemic, which I'm sure you can imagine was mm. tough. Um, yeah. And I was working with the TV news agent and I had these big cities that were interested in me, but they said, no, we want you to delete your channel. We like you, but really we don't want you to have a channel. And at that point I was only a couple months in and I said, if it's, if it's TV or the channel, I'm keeping the right. channel. I didn't know That's this. Okay. So yeah, rooted I was in it. And I asked yeah. some of them, I was like, so what if I was a producer, my face mm -hmm. wasn't on TV and behind the scenes. No, we would still want you to delete the channel. I'm like, okay, well, that to me is really kind of stepping on my rights. Um, because I'm not really posting controversial things. I just thought that it was like a breach of, you know, <laughs> And a bit of an overreach, but I can understand. I can understand too, right? You're the brand, your face, your knowledge, your, name, your, likeness, your voice. It's no, yeah. I don't, I want to own my own name and face. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's why I'm so excited and or, or very uh, intrigued when I learned about what you're doing and seeing you in action on your channel as we look at it a little further, right? I mean, there's people like me, and I'm the kind of a normal, average Joe putting up a channel and doing, you know, doing our own coverage. You are a true professional. So let's talk a little bit about that. You know, the you had mentioned in one of your videos that, you know, there is this TV reporting and then a TV reporting ought to have a YouTube channel. And yet, and then this idea that uh, I was calling it citizen journalism, but that's not what you are. Uh, yeah. You, you called it independent journalism. journalism. Yeah, and there's so, that movement, right? And it's just very intriguing. Tell me a little bit about that movement that's happening. Well, we've been seeing this, you know, ever since cell phones became mm. so easily accessible and anyone can capture, you know, a video and become like it it was so weird to me when, you know, I would go live on TV, but then all of a sudden people could go live on Facebook or do their own live streams. It's like people were getting to experience, you know, right. that that on their own mini scale. But the thing is, because we have all of the resources, it's free to publish whatever you want online. I mean, you can really start your own whatever you want to talk about. And that that is um, becoming more and more popular. So I just think that, you know, we're seeing way more people uh, create content. Oh, yeah. So that's citizen journalism, right? Right. But what you're doing is you call it independent journalism. Yeah. I guess I just feel like I'm definitely in a different category because, yeah. and I wouldn't say that every video is like this, but you know, some of my videos that I work really hard on, you know, they have a structure and I'm trying to interview multiple people and I'm really trying to treat it like I would for broadcast. Um, but it's just on my channel. Uh, so, you know, it's like, I think another example of independent journalism maybe would be like Vice, you think? Well, they're, they're a corporation, which I think you're going to head towards. And we'll talk yeah. about this later. I think you're headed towards a media empire. But, you know, let's, let's, let's break it down a little bit, right? You're different, okay? Let's be clear that what you do and what uh, other people do who are not, trained journalists, reporters do. It's different. I, I saw one video that you did where you went down, I think in Austin, and it was the new community and yes. the modules of these wonderful new homes and the whole concept of, yeah, that uh, it, it blew up for many reasons. I can figure, I can, I can, I can, we can talk for hours of why we think that one blew up. But the, the concept is, is this brand new concept of, you know, the, homes being built and not enough homes and houses. It's a brand new thing. But the way you covered it was so professional. I mean, it was really, you 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 explained kind of the, the situation, just like you would as a reporter would do. Yeah. And yeah. The, 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 the editing was so professional as well, highly produced, the cuts. I mean, everybody's getting better and better at it. Um, yeah. But I still saw, I can see the difference between a reporter doing it. It's like 60 minutes doing it versus right, <laughs> a, a right. citizen journalist doing it, right? I, I so. think I laugh because I look at that video and I'm like, there are so many errors. <laughs> and I just, I never thought, I never <laughs> thought that it would blow up. I, I made it because, you know, I thought it was interesting. And um, I, I was trying to make a video by a deadline for an ad sponsor. And so I kind of, you know, yeah. I shot it on my cell phone and kind of slapped it together. You know, in some of the bits, I'm chewing gum and people are like, why are you chewing gum? So it's really not that professional. And, and they're absolutely right. It's extremely cringeworthy. But I was just like, wow, you know, this was me kind of like not really putting a lot of effort into this one. And it and it did do pretty well. So, um, yeah, that's weird. But <laughs> you, you said earlier that you said that there's others like you who are trained reporters and journalists that are doing this now? Is this a real trend? Is there a lot of people like oh, you? Because you're the first that I found or a few. What I meant is like there are other people that are just deciding to become content creators with zero yeah. background, zero experience, and they're doing way better than me. Maybe they've been in the game longer. Maybe they're just, 
you know, I think one of the things that holds people back is they're so worried about, you know, judgment or, you know, am I going to look dumb? And I always tell people you got to start because, Mm. you know, you're thinking that everyone's going to see your video and criticize it. No, you'll be lucky if people see your video. (laughs) We are living in a world full of, it's so noisy, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you got, you have it all wrong in your head. I'm like, actually, chances are probably no one's going to see it because you're no one, but then you stay consistent and maybe have a viral hit. But so I feel like the, you know, people just don't start and it's too bad because a lot of people want to express themselves and, Oh, I've always wanted to make a channel about working on Jeeps. Well then (laughs) go for it, dude. Yeah. So you, so you, okay. Let's explore that a little bit about how you were doing a job you love. You're very good at it and you're moving up quite, you know, you, you see very clearly your trajectory to the larger markets and, um, but there's certain aspects of it you didn't like. And then you started this channel and it sounded like it was more of this thing you were just doing because you enjoyed it. And then when it started to succeed and you're doing both together, you had to make that choice. Yeah. Uh, at some point to do both. So it was less about being pushed out and, or was it more about pu- being pulled in to this new thing? Pulled, or? In. pulled in. Well, and I have yeah. to make this disclaimer because I can't take credit for this decision hmm. without some major backing from my Patreons. I've hmm. had a couple extremely generous Patreon supporters that mm-hmm. believe in me and my channel and my work so much that they were like, yo, you know, let's, let's help you out. And so, um, I think that that was also something that I just, I was really blessed to have happen. And without that, I would still be in TV news because like I said, you don't make a whole lot of money in TV news. So I yep. wouldn't have a lot, it, it would feel, you know, cause I was making money on the channel and I still am, but YouTube revenue is very hit or miss yes. and it's not, it's not a lot unless you're like a huge channel. And so how, how many followers do you need to have uh, in order to what, get to something that you feel like is equivalent to where you were at? And then maybe even better. I don't think it's so much about the followers. It's about the views. And so, yeah, um, okay. and I think that that still doesn't matter. You have to build your outside support, whether it's through Patreon or some other outlet Um, I have a friend who's a YouTube creator and he says he makes about, you know, 20% of his revenue from YouTube. 80% of it is from people backing him, you know, on Patreon. Interesting. And he was able to quit his job through that, but only through that. So you have to build that base. And I, I hope more people understand that. And I know we're in a tough time right now. Like, inflation and you know gas prices it's hard so anyone who's like helping me out and um Mm -hmm. you know supporting my channel it it means even more because i know that everyone has to kind of fight right now with with conditions i saw that you had um you have sponsored ads or sponsored um i don't know what you call it right Uh, videos yeah i've videos I did a run with Brilliant right now. We're not, mm-hmm. but um, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. So how does that work? I mean, like, uh, cause I don't see others with, you know, your, the 50,000 kind of right. number. Not yeah. Many are doing it. Do they reach out to you or is it just because yeah. of your experience? You're able to know that this part, like it's a commercial for, you know, a TV. <laughs> channel. Yeah. No, they reached out to me and I was like, yeah. Have you looked at my subscriber count? But pff, sure, you know, like. But like you said, it's, it is true. When I did look at your subscriber count, 50,000 is huge, but it's not like it's, it's not massive no, yet. You just started. But your views are significant. Um, some of them are getting, you know, 70,000 plus. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. Hit or miss. And yeah. it's, it's. It's it's so hard to know what's going to like that. That uh, new community video. I'm like, no way hmm. that this is gonna this is probably gonna maybe get like three thousand views you know and it has like over half a million so i think you just you just gotta create create and put it out there stay consistent and keep going i i still have 
some major milestones that I want to hit before I feel. And I think that that's been something that I've been trying to remind myself, hey, like, enjoy this success because you told yourself you'd be stoked when you got to 20,000 subscribers. And <laughs> <Yeah>. now <laughs> thousand, that's not good enough. And it's like, okay, right, like, right. <laughs> that's, that's good. But like, can we can we like, can we have a moment here? You know? So I, I think you're doing great. Yeah. And uh, right, you got your own milestone set up. But so uh, this, I think you move from your career, you started this, and you had a little base, it sounded like. So it wasn't like you just dropped everything and, you know, completely yeah. start. But yet, it's a significant change. And um, you because of your experience, though, it did transfer over to this move. So it's a little different than, let's say you're a baker, and you're baking, and you're you're getting a job from your career at a restaurant or some hotel that you're working for and then you decide you're going to become a youtube star that's a bit more of a huge leap because yeah. but in your case this was your career this is what you're trained for storytelling editing journalism right yeah so it makes a lot of sense and i just i'm, I'm intrigued with this whole concept of you're doing exactly what you're doing but instead of being paid and doing a tv right. way to medium you're doing internet, which we all understand is eclipsing TV anyways. And so it makes sense that a reporter like you should make that decision. So true. So true. And I saw all of those, you know, stars aligning and I'm like, all right, you know, it's, it's time to make the decision. And so I, yeah. I'm very happy I did. <laughs> yeah. So this was last year right? No, no, this was less than, uh, this was just about two months ago that I had my last day, May 20th. What? Yeah. I'm confused. I'm shocked. What? You mean when I went full time? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May 20th is when I went full time. So previous to that, I was doing both. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I, was I caught you at the right time. <laughs> yeah. I was doing both for almost Breaking a year. Breaking news. Ellie left her career. It just happened two months ago. Yeah, really recently, very recently. So it's been, yeah, I'm, I'm so very. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been awesome. How's it, so how's it feeling uh, two months in? It's been really good. Um, Are you scared? No, not no at fear. all. No, I feel great. I know, I know for a it fact really cool. it's the right decision. And I think that the further away I get mm -hmm. from that, you know, nine to six hmm. locked into these hours, locked into this schedule. I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to the seg segment of the show where we're going to deep dive into your personal uh, life. But okay. you're a traveler, you're an adventurer. So yeah. it all kind of makes sense. Uh, space <laughs> yeah. is, your, no. is your area of interest. And I love um, that. I love having the ability to just go wherever. It, it feels like uh, that you've hit your authentic self. Yes. Um, you have your brand. You have your personality. You can do whatever you like. Uh, you're going to cover Giga Texas like we all did. But you're the only one that had a horse. <laughs> this is true. And that, that became controversial, which was... Oh yeah, but, you know because it was the same time that that Business Insider article came out that Elon had, <laughs> you know, given a horse to a flight attendant to, I guess, <laughs> not a sexual favor, and so I shared it on Twitter, and all of these like, you know, there's like Tesla Q people. I guess yeah. it would be the equivalent of like the SpaceX yeah. haters. They're like, oh, you know, did Elon give you that horse? And I'm like, yes. no. I'm flattered. You think I know him, you know? <laughs> that is funny. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's hilarious. How coincidental that had happened. But uh, no. I, I, the, the concept of you um, uh, covering the story of Giga Texas, uh, yeah. but it, it, it you saw it in the comments where people, you shared it when your tweets, that was really cool how people were moved by the whole, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Giga Texas. It was, uh, Space, Starbase. Uh, Starbase. Starbase. Yeah. This concept of the horse and the rocket. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's it's poetic. It is. Very poetic. It is. Yeah. I that's one of my favorite pictures. It just it it really does speak a thousand words. It's like 
Yeah. You know, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the reason I bring that up, it's again, it's just, a, it's a great um, I, concept to share this, the symbolically and metaphorically, the right. idea that, you know, you with your skill sets and built to express your personality, your brand, your knowledge, uh, journalism, but also fun travel. <laughs> it's all like, boom. I- but, you know, you make a good point that I'm discovering my authentic self because I feel like yeah. now that I've dropped the TV persona and like needing to be kind of <laughs> cookie cutter and worried about, I don't know, just like a little bit more uh, boxed in. Now it's like I really can be like, you know, like I can be goofy in a video and like it doesn't matter, you know, like whereas yeah. on TV news... You're not there. Here, to- let's let's show the folks here a little bit of your TV reporter persona. Go ahead and uh, report on this interview that I'm doing with you right now. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. So I am here joined by Herbert, and he is interviewing me about my background in TV news. Now, we have a lot to cover in this episode. We're going to go through the origin story of my YouTube. We have some fun trivia that you haven't heard about. So stay tuned for that. Don't go anywhere. And don't change that channel. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. In some of your videos, you do have that, which is still, I think you should keep. It is still yeah. very important for certain segments where you're just telling something important. And yeah. again, it has its role, but it's, <laughs> I laugh because it's a few people have that skill. <laughs> yeah. No, people, people are like, you still sound like a news person and i'm like okay like whatever i, you I know? think you should there there yeah. are like i said there's pieces and segment of an episode that you're creating right. where that really gives it the credibility exactly. gives you the, your, your setting sharing information then then you then you go have your fun personality and then you mix it up it's it's perfect honestly yeah <laughs> so uh yeah i want to stay on this concept of uh independent journalism that you are shepherding here spearheading um this is a professional who's now doing kind of reporting, but you're doing it independently. And I feel like you're headed towards an empire. This, I feel like this is, uh, it's a mini empire that might happen. Yeah. Um, but this concept that it's, again, very different approach than just regular YouTubers who they rely on their personality, um, which many have and they take off. Great. Many don't. Uh, but you're providing information and you research it. Right. You're yeah. still going in and you like you would a story and you know how to tell the story, too. Right. So I, I just feel like this independent journalism is a big market. Uh, it yeah. It feels like important. Uh, I've had like you said earlier that everybody has a cell phone now. And mm-hmm. uh, we've seen this for the last five, 10 years. Everybody uses a cell phone. But and they're great. That It's wonderful to see that. But it's just that that middle ground, that middle ground right. between this sterile white, you know, reporter on the channel versus right. it's a, the best of both worlds. It is. I, I just feel it like is. it's going to, if well, it hasn't taken off, I feel like it will. Yeah. What I love too about YouTube is that I'm not limited to maximum two minutes to tell a story because mm-hmm. guess what? Sometimes to tell a story thoroughly, you need, you know, a good five, 10 minutes. And mm-hmm. so I just love that. Like I can still do a good job and be professional, but um, also not feel like I'm shorting the viewers and like, and, and be even more thorough and, and get it right. You know, cause I think that's one of the criticisms with TV is like, people feel like, you know, especially like if you get interviewed for a story and they're like, yeah, they chopped out most of the important stuff I said, and they took a 10 second soundbite that was controversial. Well, they're right. That's usually mm-hmm. what a new story is. It's like, you know, and, and, it's I'm doing a live stream later today, actually, just to talk about, you know, this whole idea of journalistic integrity. And Elon tweeted mm-hmm. about it today yes. that, you know, yes. um, media Perfect. is becoming a, a click, a clickbait machine versus a yes. truth sharing machine. And he's right. It's it's getting out of hand. Yeah. What are we going to do? Perfect. I, Another example of a perfect uh content and area that you you uniquely right. have the ability to answer um, yeah. and explore further. Okay, so let's get into space and SpaceX. Um, so Starlink fell in your lap. Were yep. you always interested in space? How did you decide to start covering this area? 
Why is space important from your perspective? Okay, so uh, was I always interested? I had been pretty interested as a kid, but not like diehard like some people are. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I'm obviously very invested in it, I'm very interested. My ex-boyfriend was the one who kind of like steered me in the way of, of Starlink. And I just saw mm -hmm. the massive potential and, you know, game changing ability there to have internet from anywhere. I mean, that's like huge. That's, that's not just to, you know, be able to watch YouTube wherever you want. It's like, you can access healthcare, you can access education. It's, it's really, mm -hmm. really an amazing thing for the world. Um, and so that, I was genuinely interested in. And then I learned more about SpaceX. And, you know, I grew up in um, Manhattan Beach. So that's near LAX, near the Los Angeles airport. So I wasn't too far from SpaceX, but I had never really, um, you know, did much research about them. And now I see, yeah, tremendous value in becoming a multi-planetary species. And that mm -hmm. is obviously the, the main goal here with um, creating Starship, right, is to get us to Mars and beyond. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that it's it's good to have a backup option. And it's something that's going to take a lot of time, clearly. So we got to get started. And I feel like Elon is just one of the most influential people of our time because he's leading that charge. And a lot of people will just either not see the value or see it as too difficult. And he's already, you know, created some rocket reusability that other people just didn't even touch. Mm -hmm. It's, it's huge. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I think that, I think that space is for everyone, you know, like you don't have to be some like brainiac or, you know, like space should it, it's for all of us. We're all affected by it, right? We're all created from stardust, but we all have a stake in this because it's it's humanity. Um, it's keeping us alive, right? And so I think that I want to get more people excited about it. And mm -hmm. some of my viewers have seen me as a way to like bridge that gap between uh, yeah. people that have no idea what's going on. They just yeah. don't even know. A non a non scientist, non geek, non. Yeah. Uh, you know, who's able to right. just uh, wide-eyed excitement, but then explain it with your journalism, right. you know, ability to explore further and, and right. break down the facts, but in a digestible way for the average person to enjoy totally. and learn. And like you said, it's spaces for everyone. So, you know, and I do think that this is going to take off. And yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's true though. It already is. It already is. And unfortunately, it's taking off in the sense that Elon is also making headlines mm, like you know, sure. we're living in a tabloid magazine every day. But, you know, it, it is becoming more mainstream. And that's great. Yeah. So, so. The, what are you excited about? You, I saw recently you were talking about the orbital launch for Starship. It's in a home stretch. When do you expect that to happen? How are uh, you going to cover it? Um, when do I expect it to happen? Man, I, I heard that, you know, we think it's going to be in August. You just don't know until you just don't know until it actually happens. Right. Because we've been delayed now for almost a year. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, I will be there no matter what, even if I have to drive, I mean, unless really? yeah. something terrible happens, I, I will make it there. <laughs> And, um, you know, I mean, you obviously can't get too close because mm -hmm. you want to be safe in case of uh, RUDs, right? Rapid, uh, rapid unscheduled disassembly, right? So you mm -hmm. don't want to be in, in, in that area. But, um, yeah, I... I <laughs> rapid I, scheduled disassembly. Yeah. It's, right. it's a real thing. It's a real thing. That's yeah, a term I, for a... Uh... <laughs> A rud, yeah. I did an interview with oh, a, a sound guy for one of for Tim Dodd, another really big YouTuber, and yeah. he's trying to basically like make it so that he can record the audio from as close as possible, but also like protect anyway, the yeah. gear, right? It's this yeah. really hard problem to solve. So, so. tell us about Starship. Uh, why an orbital launch is so important. Well, the orbital launch is just the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really just 
it's really just the beginning. We, we want to get to Mars eventually, but that is done in steps and layers. And so I think, um, you know, we've, we've had a couple, a couple hops and a couple short duration flights, but this will really be like a, a major milestone in the development. And so, um, but we obviously want to do it right and, you know, have people be safe and, um, so yeah, it's it's just getting us closer to Mars. And that is obviously what I'm most excited for. Well, and also going back to the moon. I'm pretty excited for that too. Yeah, first woman in the moon, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've interviewed these scientists. Um, I saw you did Avi Loeb, Scott Manley, and others. Yeah. Um, tell me about that experience. Is it pretty cool that you actually got to, you, I heard you traveled there as well and you yeah. visited them. And yeah, who else are you going to be interviewing next? Yeah. Yeah, well, most people are like, hey, um, you know, can I set up a Zoom with you? I'm like, hi, can I fly to your house? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but um, they were great. It was so fun. And it was also like, you know, me getting the reward of getting to see a new place and traveling mm-hmm. to, to make it happen. But um, in the beginning with Starlink, I was trying to, I didn't just want to cover like what Starlink was and do like a speed test over and over. I wanted to... Mm-hmm cover the angle that no one else was touching, which is who are the communities that are benefiting from this? You know, who's champion championing this? And so I would reach out to, you know, the superintendent of a rural Virginia school district who needed internet connection during the pandemic, right? Because everything's virtual. They had nothing. Then they decided to try out Starlink when it was super early and worked out great for them. So I found these people on LinkedIn, you know, the, the leader of the um, Native American Ho tribe in Washington state. He said, you know, a lot of their people had never had internet. They didn't even have an email. So, so it wasn't any, um, there was nothing foreign about like reaching out to someone and saying, Hey, can I interview you? But what was different mm-hmm. is like, Hey, I'm willing to actually like put money toward this and book a flight and get a rental car and, and, and come to you and, and make this work. And, um, yeah. so that, that was just a, a really cool experience. And I just want to keep building on that. Right. I mean, yeah. I just, that's, I, I want to be that boots on the ground reporter. I want to be is that, is that one step more deeper more cl- closer, but also more information that others aren't going to be able to get if they don't yeah. do this. Yeah, yeah. I just think, I think everyone would prefer watching people interact in person than yeah. than watching virtual, you know? I mean, it's better than nothing, but I think that yeah. there's something really genuine and authentic about being face-to-face with someone. Okay. So the number of launches that SpaceX is doing is increasing and um, seems to be yeah. like quite regular now. Any kind of commentary on that or any kind of something that's exciting that you're waiting for in terms of a launch well, this coming year? You know, uh, I think that it is kind of crazy that they're, they're so routine now. It's, it's, it's great. Um, and, and I still haven't seen a launch in person personally, Mm -hmm. so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, hopefully it's Starship. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it, it just shows how successful they are and, you know, seeing, seeing the booster be returned and landed, is just it never gets old. Can't yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can't wait till they have the two or three all landing at the yeah. same time. Or the chopsticks, you know, the arms yeah. catching. When are we going to see that one? The chopsticks, yeah. Um. Well, I think they're going to try to do it with the first orbital launch. But even Elon has admitted. Right. Yeah, it sounds crazy because it is. But it's like I just love that they're willing to push those limits and. Thank goodness it's not NASA because they don't have all this red tape. They, I mean, they have some, yeah. right, with like the environmental assessment, but they don't have nearly the amount of like, all right, let's, you know, plan this for ages and talk about how much this is going to cost. And they're just like, go, 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 you know, blow it up, whatever. Keep going. Make it work. <laughs> He um, said that, yeah, he said he expects it to fail. So yeah, the uh, orbital launch rocket goes back and they're trying to catch it with the chopsticks. Yeah. It could just... It's more likely going to fail than not, right? <laughs> no, not, but if it does, you know, that's part of the process. And yeah. and I think that, honestly, like, 
getting getting so involved in Elon and and seeing you know the failures of of SpaceX and Tesla over the years and how they've persevered, it just also really inspired me that I'm like, yo, I I shouldn't be afraid of failing. Like I I got to go for this and realize that failing is just part of the process. You know, like That's so. It, it 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 kind of translates. Um, it, it's really a great inspiration for. So your own. based on what you just said, uh, last uh, twenty minutes here, when we when goes to Mars, you're gonna have to have boots on the ground in Mars, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't properly tell that story and report on it if you're like here in uh, <laughs> Earth. <laughs> that sounds really scary. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie. I I've been in some pretty scary situations with my outdoor activities, but that one is really like you know you you, yeah. you could die, um, yeah. and, and so I think um, but but I've been thinking more about the possibility of me going to space someday in my lifetime. Yes. I actually interviewed a, an astronaut recently, and she was like, "I think you'd be a really good candidate." And and just nice. to hear her say that, this woman who spent forty days in space, right? Like she she's walked the walk. Um, it's not something that I've ever really uh, visualized. It just makes my, sense. It makes yeah, sense, but, Ellie. Come on, we were yeah. just talking about your authentic self. You're an adventure. Yeah. You're a rock climber. You like to yeah. travel. Yeah. <laughs> You want I mean, to be on boots on the ground reporting. Yes, yes. And the first group of people to Mars, or even like you say, just let's say made the moon, they're going to need a yeah. reporter there to tell right. and record right. the story in a professional way. Yeah. Come on, Ellie, let's do it. I would do it. I would do it. And and I, I even told my, <laughs> my mom that I, I was interested in this and, you know, she's an engineer and I thought that she would be so excited. And she uh -huh. was like, I, I don't scared. want you to go because I'm scared. And I'm like, well, I think that's a pretty good way to die. You know, yes. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if you know, you're doing something that not a lot of people will ever get to do, it's, it's epic. It's amazing. It's, you know, so. Did you watch yeah. Inspiration 4? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then there I, were citizens and they were telling the story yeah, and they were. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you know, I, there's a lot of parallels with rock climbing where like you have to trust the system and you have to. Right. Yeah. Just so it's, it's, it's like the same idea, right? I mean, yes, anything could happen, but guess what? Anything could happen when you're driving to the grocery store. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, well, the maybe not the, uh, maybe not the Mars. But go to the moon. Be the, the moon. first oh, uh, reporter in the moon. Can you imagine? Uh, I'd be like, I'm I actually can't. here. This is not fake. <laughs> <laughs> and you're climbing the rocks of the moon, okay? Yeah. Be the first rock climber to the moon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'd be so good. <laughs> you're perfect for this. There's no one else. Honestly. You're yeah. this, you were, this is all leading up to that. No, that's so crazy. Because I think you could be right, but it's like, it's wild. It's wild. That that would be, I'd be like, yeah. I I'm in a simulation. Life isn't real. Well, but and and the reality is that, uh, as you were saying earlier just now, that the rocket launches has become regular. It's crazy yeah. that what is it? It's almost like one a week, or sometimes even yeah. twice a oh, week. Yeah. Right. It's like what they're, you know, what I mean. It's just. Nobody knows this. Few people know yeah. that there's a rocket being launched every week. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's like an airplane, right? Flying well, regularly now. And soon going to space will become very pedestrian as well. Yeah. And, and so that's what I mean, that going to the moon is not going to be that scary, right. really. Uh, it's the landing. <laughs> Oh, As Elon said, it's landing on impact. That's the, that's the part they need to still practice a few times. It'd be so cool. It'd be so okay. You're going to do it. You're going to be like, you're going to be supernova. I, I can't use that word. Uh, Elon just used that word. <laughs> you you're going to be. We, we're, we're, declaring, we're declaring it today, 2022, we July 27th. <laughs> yeah. Ellie on the moon. Yep. Ellie in space, first milestone, and then Ellie on the moon. Oh, man. See? No. See how perfect that is? You named your channel Ellie in space. So you can't not do it. It's a Sorry. foreshadowing. It's a foreshadowing. It's a foreshadowing. <laughs>
It is. So uh, yeah, you're perfect for this. You will do this. It's going to, your, your broadcast uh, independent journalism, you're going to be a media empire and this is what is going to just make you go global. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be the person holding the camera. Okay. So you're not all alone. <laughs> I would love the help. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you're fun um so yeah so it sounds like you're not going to go to mars but yeah you would do this and so what what yeah just high level this journey that spacex and elon has taken us all to get into space again and you're clearly so excited about it that you have devoted your career and life towards this topic um yeah and so do you think that do you you said that it was already pretty big. You feel like that the audience for this is pretty big already. And it's just going to, what's your, how many it's people gonna do you think? Bigger. Yeah. It's going to get bigger. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's, you know, these like, these like prank channels and people that are just doing dumb stuff on YouTube have, have more, more views, I think, and more interest. So we want to change that and get, you know, things uh, like, like SpaceX and, and space travel, a little bit more mainstream, but I think it's mm -hmm. happening. It's happening right before us. And like I said, once those launches start, mm -hmm. you're going to see a big change. You know, people are going to actually start to say, oh, wow, this really could happen. You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Something big has to happen. I remember Elon 2000, he said that uh, to get everybody excited about space again, he wants to show life on Mars. And so he was going to shoot a seed, right? It's going to land in Mars and it's going to be the very first plant to grow in a little kind of uh, aquarium bubble thing. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that has to happen. Um, it's yeah. going to just jolt humanity towards so this is incredibly exciting. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you watch all the space movies and it's like that will be real soon, which is, I mean, we don't know what version, but, um, you know, yeah. it's. Have you, have, do you know Ash Martian? Um, she's a friend of mine here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Have you met her yet? Mm -mm. Okay. I'll have to introduce you, but she just recently uh, uh, 3D printed a helmet uh, mm. similar to, wow. um, yeah, the, the, uh, what the, the kind of the suits that just uh, folks are making, but yeah, I'm going to get her to make me one, but she needs to make one for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll introduce you guys. You'll, you'll love her. That'd be super cool. Oh yeah. That'd be yeah. awesome. I want to more learn more about you and your personal story. Um, tell us about that. Uh, what happened? Where did you grow up? What did you study? Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. Um, so <laughs> Why do you I, say wow? <laughs> well, there's just, there's just so much. I mean, man, where do we start? Um, I am adopted. I was born here in Utah. I was adopted before I was born. So, uh, mm. you know, went on a plane at two, two days old to Los Angeles with my mm. parents. Mm. And I was raised in Manhattan Beach, California. Uh, I went to college at Loyola Marymount University. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I got an English degree. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting an English degree at a private university. It's probably <laughs> not necessary. But um, I, I really still didn't know what I wanted to do by the time I was graduating. And um, I thought, man, it'd be kind of cool to do TV news, but I didn't do journalism school. I didn't do the the internship. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if you watch Parks and Rec, but mm -hmm. there is a character yeah. named Herd Happley, who in real life, his name is Jay Jackson, and he was a TV reporter turned actor, and uh -huh. he ran a reporter's clinic. So it's like, you know, Oh. Crash Course 101, let's let's make you an audition reel, an audition tape. And yeah. so I, I paid him to help me make a reel. We sent it across the country. South Dakota said, we see potential. Do you want to move here in five days, sight unseen? Wow. And I said, sure. So I moved to South Dakota. I started my career in TV news with no knowledge of anything. <laughs> I see. So I kind of look at that as like, that was almost like my schooling, right? Um, Cause yeah. it was pretty small market. It was pretty like, you know, easy going. Um, and then I moved to Southern Oregon. I did two years there. I did two years in Washington state as the main anchor. And then I moved here to Utah. Um, so yeah, that's some of that background. Exciting. Um, uh, it's very I cool. Think, Again, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've taken an unconventional path in a Mm -hmm. lot of things that I've done in life. Like a lot. That's a, that's a that's a thread here. I mean, you are willing to throw yourself in. It's it's almost like every one of your stories, right? You don't necessarily yeah. need to anything about it. That's the goal. You go and research yeah. it, you study it, and you report it. So in that little video that you did, the audition trip, you had to learn how to do your reporter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can no, anybody we, learn how to do that? Could I learn how to do? That? <laughs> absolutely. He, we went around. We did like three or no, we did like four or five like mock stories. So mm-hmm. for one of them, he actually took me to, you know, a real life protest of the circus wow. in downtown Los Angeles. And he said, here, say this. And I said it 20 times, you know, oh. Jay, look behind me. These crowd of protesters are here. And, you know, they're, they're saying that you know, <laughs> the elephants need justice or whatever. And I said that like 20 times. And then it was kind of weird. They're probably like, what is she doing? And, mm-hmm. um, and and then he edited it together and I had something to present to at least show my potential. I didn't lie. I was like, yo, I, I don't know anything, but, <laughs> you know. You know, uh, anyway. so you have um, one of the reasons why I think you're are successful and will be successful is you have an amazing personality. You're funny. You're, you know, you, you look like you're excited and you're, um, very open. But then I discovered that in one of your personal videos that you say that you're actually a shy person in high school. And, yeah, um, and, and tell us a little bit about that alcohol scenario oh, that yeah. happened. Um, totally. Yeah, it's just yeah. very, it's, yeah. it's very, un, it's one of those things I don't believe, right? Because when I see you now, when I talk to you, and when I see you in videos, just you don't see that person that you're describing as a high school kid. Yeah. I was extremely shy um, Mm. and really bad. And I discovered alcohol at 15 years old. And all of a sudden I was in my mind, the life of the party. This is amazing. (laughs) I'm, I'm feeling loose. I'm feeling wild. And I was, you know, so, so excited about it, I guess, and leaning on it as a crutch that, you know, I started getting drunk every day. And this was distracting me, obviously, from school and hanging out with just people that were not really my friends. And then I had one night where I drank way too much, Mm -hmm. ended up in the hospital, you know, parents were on a trip uh, four hours away in Vegas, they had to drive Mm -hmm. home in the middle of the night, they, you know, they were terrified. And so that, um, that really was a scary moment. And I didn't drink after that because I was scared of alcohol. And then I contemplated maybe trying again. And I was like, it's been so long that I don't want to break this streak. I, I'm, I, I am, I have an all or nothing personality. Mm. And so at that point I was like, I've, had no alcohol like why not keep this going and here we are 15 years later and i still haven't broken that streak i Mm. never want to break that streak that is Mm. my identity now is that i don't drink alcohol and i'm very comfortable with that about myself and um so yeah and it and it kind of forced me over the years to learn how to get out of my shell and how to just rely on being me and being in social situations sans alcohol. And, um, you know, I, it's not to pass judgment on people who drink in social situations. I know that that is kind of what a lot of people like to do, but it's just not for me. And, um, it's something I'm really proud of. So someone asked me like, you know, what, what is one of the most things you're proud of? And I was like, you know, Mm -hmm. actually that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's another one of your videos. And I know you have a separate channel, YouTube channel called Elevated. Yeah, yeah that's, Elevated. That's, hilarious. that's funny. <laughs> Elevated. Yeah. Ellie dash yeah. Vated. But yeah. um, another one that, you know, hit me and emotionally tugged a little bit. And it's something that I hope more people and certain people, like you said, it's not it's not for everybody and there's not no judgment, but there's a lot right. of people. Uh, you know, I want my daughters who are in uh, college to hear and understand what you said, right? That you don't need to drink at a party. Uh, oh my gosh. You've, you're, you're an example of that, that ha- finds a way to be fine. And it, you don't right. have to drink and don't, don't do that. And, and that's, you're cool and everything's fine and nobody's, you know, it's going to be just okay. And, 
uh, to be at a party, not drink and not have to drink. Over. Just, so again, it's, I hope that that's a message that you can carry on and become your, uh, of course, you'll decide what is best for you, but that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, I just really feel like I meet a lot of people that they're like, oh, I don't want to go out because then I'm going to have to right. drink. And I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. No, why? Why is this your like mindset about it? You don't have to, but I think they're just that yeah. uncomfortable and it's yeah. unfortunate. Exactly know? right. So. so that is really cool about you. Um, still don't believe you were shy, but okay. Oh, I, was. <laughs> I, was. And I had braces and I would like cover my mouth when I laughed and, you know, I'd have to <laughs> and I'm like, no one wants to hear you talk. And I was like, I was pretty. Okay. I was not very nice to myself. So it's it's great mm. to get out of that. And, and TV reporting also forces you because some stories you have to go around a neighborhood and knock on doors and be like, yeah. hey, I'm you know here with Fox News. And, oh, we heard about the shooting down the street. Kind of hard to miss. Uh, yeah. What yeah. did you? I mean, it, it, it's, that's what I mean. That is weird that a person who's shy is able to now be on TV yeah. and share so much and then being able to just, you know, like call a stranger and talk to them. Yes. Um, so you, you know, that's a great therapy or a great uh, way to evolve and grow as a person. Well, you one of it. the other reasons I didn't expect to be reading the news as a TV news anchor is because when I was younger, I had a speech impediment. So what? I couldn't say my yeah. R's, you mm -hmm. know, wed, fio, twak, obuoro. Like I, I would talk like that. And um, it, I talked like that yeah. until fifth grade. No, no, I just, you know, couldn't say my R's. And so luckily I went through speech therapy, but my mom jokes all the time. She's like, I can't believe, you know, you went from not being yeah. able to pronounce R's to yeah. pronouncing things pretty well now. Cause well, you know, maybe you gotta... the speech therapy was part of your education to be a perfect yeah. speaker. Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> another area of your life that you showcase a few times is rock climbing. Oh uh, my gosh. Amazing that you do that. <clears throat> Tell is. me about that hobby or is it more than a hobby what, what is oh, it, it. <laughs> if if i had to do like a second channel about anything it would be rock climbing um because i i just absolutely love it uh it has put me in situations where there's some of my scariest moments but you get through it and then you feel like a rock star <laughs> um but really I, I like the physical challenge. I'm a very active person. I like that it's this mental puzzle. Um, and yeah, I'm just obsessed. Yeah, I, it's interesting. The threads are getting closer and closer to tell the whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Why does she like well, rock climbing? <laughs> yeah, I think that that's part of the reason why that astronaut made that comment because she's like, you know, rock climbing outside is one of those yeah kind of scary situations and, and you're doing that. So, um, yeah, who knows? You're very knows? inspirational. You're, you're breaking Thank down you. walls, but you're climbing over them. Let's put it that way. You're yeah. climbing over, yes. going over that I mountain, am. the next mountain. Oh, I bigger love it. Bigger and bigger mountains. <laughs> I just, I just go and, um, it's, it's awesome. It's highly yeah. recommend getting a GoPro if you're into sports. Let's go back to YouTube and your channel. Um, you 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 started becoming a full time YouTube just a couple months ago. Shocking. Yep. Uh, yeah. Your video that you did, where will Tesla employees live? That one we talked yeah. about earlier. That got five hundred thousand yeah. views, seven thousand likes. So, which is your favorite video that you've made so far? Oh, oh my gosh, it's so it's hard. So many. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a couple ties for sure. Um, I, yeah, I, I really liked a lot of the Starbase ones. I think any of them were like, I've made it this adventure where I've flown mm. to San Francisco and rented a car and, and driven to Scott Manley's house. That's definitely mm. like one of them, but I have a couple scenarios like that now. So, um, and not necessarily like only the ones that have done well are my favorite. There's some mm -hmm. that for whatever reason didn't do that well, but you know, I thought that I did a good job. I was proud of the work and I had mm -hmm. fun making it. So um, I would say, you know, a, a lot of them are, are a close tie. I thought the flying to Boston was also like just a crazy trip because mm -hmm. 
I booked that red eye flight, which I don't like red eyes. I don't mm-hmm. recommend taking a red eye if you can avoid it. But mm-hmm. like I I booked this flight like two days before and I flew to Boston. I'd never been to Boston. I hadn't spent much time on the East Coast. And I got there at like 6.30 in the morning. My rental car was delayed, didn't get it till eight. Then um, my interview with this guy was at three, Avi Loeb. And so I had to like, I couldn't check in at my hotel because it wasn't ready yet. So I basically walked around Boston for 14 miles to stay awake. I was getting some sightseeing. I went to a public restroom. I curled my hair Mm. using the outlet in the public restroom. I mean, it was like a very like rough. Memories of uh, when your your old (laughs) early career, first year career. Here's I'm by myself. I was just like, this is, this is insanity. You know, I've had hardly any sleep because I didn't really sleep yeah. on the planet. So I was like trying to like, you know, be my most polished when I finally got to the, inter- oh, and then, and then I hired this guy to help me film that interview <laughs> who okay. I had never met. I found him on Instagram. <laughs> I, you know, paid him cash. I picked him up at a bus stop. So we had to have, you know, a lot of things go right. He had to not murder me. I had to not murder him. <laughs> You know, I'm picking up this guy at the bus stop. He's going to some random location 40 minutes away with me. Like, and yeah. then I had to trust that he would get back to me all of the footage that he shot right. on his. Oh my God. It was, it was kind of insane. Like, yeah. looking back at it, everything about the trip was, <laughs> was insane, but it worked out. It's so. another story where you just, uh, whatever has to happen, I'm going to do. Yeah. It's going to be like, you know, on my, a lot of preparation, but also a lot of uh, finding. I need to figure it out right, right now. Enough. In it, winging it. And I feel well, like the more that I have those experiences, the more yeah. I I have them because the bar is just like, you know, set at a new level to where, oh, that's not that crazy. Now this is crazy. And then you, you survive that. It. You're like, okay, you know, this isn't that bad. Yeah. So, so it's accounted that you have over 300 plus videos. Um, but then I just realized now that it wasn't just from a year ago, right? So how, uh, it, otherwise it'd be like one a day. Uh, what's your typical you know, schedule? I, I try to do at least two videos a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I need, or at least, I don't know if I need to, but it's mm-hmm. recommended to like pick a day and have like every Saturday at 10 AM you can yeah. expect, you know, mm-hmm. but me my style is like sometimes there's just stuff that happens that day and i'm like oh man i want to make a quick video about this Uh, Mm -hmm. but i didn't see it coming so i can't have a schedule for that but um yeah i try to be you know as as much as possible Mm -hmm. if you can make a video every day great but at least do two a week that's kind of my mantra Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and then uh yeah. So where are you headed? What kind of topics are you going to start covering? Um, what, what's in the, what's on your agenda for the next month, two months? Yeah. So I'm really excited for the Tesla shareholders meeting. Um, right. And not just because the meeting, but I think, you know, there's just stories galore in Austin, Texas, just Texas too. So I'm going to be able to gather a lot of content when I'm there, which I'm excited about. Um, but I think, you know, someday I would love to interview Elon, of course. Yes. Um, so that is definitely like big bucket list goal. Uh, so I want to I want to make sure that that happens. I want to cover the orbital launch of Starship. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to interview, you know, more kind of high level people, not just Elon. I have a commitment that Tim Dodd, everyday astronaut, will do an interview with me. We haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, just I you guys were already friends. I've seen photos of you guys hanging out. We. So I, I ran into him at Cyber Rodeo. Yeah. I was like the only person too that really knew he was there. I, I was sitting, um, you know, on a, on a display of a Tesla, like on the, you know, on the platform and my shoes were off cause my feet were killing me. And all of a sudden I see in the distance, Tim Dodd and I like run over. I probably looked insane. And I was like, Tim, it's me, you know, like. You guys are peas in a pod. Yeah. You guys yeah, are like yeah. the two and, that um, are breaking borders here about space. Right. Yeah. Oh, I think he's fascinating. And like it his smart, origin yeah. story is also really cool. But um, yeah. so we did like a quick little minute, like, can you give me your reaction to this? But mm. I need to do like the in-depth with him yeah. because, and you know, another role that I have um, while we're just, you know, declaring mm-hmm. things to the universe and manifesting here, I want to do a <laughs> TED talk someday. 
Um, I have no, no, no reporter voice though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to do wow. a TED talk. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what I would talk about yet, yeah. either my adoption yeah. or, um, you know, I have a couple ideas, but yeah. yeah. We'll There's get so there. so much. I think your story is very inspirational. Your, the move, all this, everything we talked about. Um, yeah, so you're, you're, so space and technology and you're, you're dabbling more into Tesla and you're going to probably expand that a, a bit. Um, and this is going to become an empire. So where are you at uh, the beginning stages? You just left full time. Um, yep. what do you, what do you need? What are your milestones that you need before this becomes a real business? And, you know, where, what's your next um, milestone where you want to accomplish the next hill that you're going to climb? Yeah. I mean, obviously like a hundred thousand subscribers. I mean, yeah. I think that I'll feel like I've really made it when I get to a million. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did, you know, um, <laughs> But um, that's a milestone. Interviewing Elon's a milestone. Having a video that breaks a million views, milestone. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're close. We're close. I would say that. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it all really depends on how many people want to support me externally. Um, it's kind of how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're getting there. You're moving, and you just yeah. started, so it's going to be uh, pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, uh, let me ask you a few more questions about um, the one question about Elon, and I want to that, that specific thing you just said about how the journalism and the I know you're going to do your own video, but this will be published after yours. <laughs> so, what's your thought about you know that what's where journalism headed and the truth and versus clickbait? Um, yeah, what were you what were you thinking in your head right now? What would you like to tell Elon about that? Oh. Well, I totally can understand what he's saying and he's right. And I think that it's, you know, this dangerous kind of snowball that, that we're seeing of, it just seems to be getting worse. And I mm -hmm. think that, you know, we're in a world full of noise and it's really hard to break through that noise. So how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to you know, write something that's attention grabbing and you might need to like skew it a little bit to really write like, you know, if, if, if we were to go to a city council meeting and say, you know, mm. highlights from Tuesday night's city council meeting, <laughs> hell no, you're not going to click on that. No, that's so boring. Mm. But you know, like something really controversial <laughs> is going to pique your interest. So, yeah. you know, it's, that's one thing that I'm going to be talking about today um, is, is how do we incentivize the truth? And I think it's a really hard problem, you know, incentivize um, the truth. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah. You're but thinking it's a hard principles. You're thinking, yeah. Elon. that's what he's going to figure yeah. out. Yeah. How, how do we not reward? Right. Because if mm -hmm. you click on the article, they win. Yeah. They're it's, it's, sad because i think this is a mile uh, the, what happened is wall street journal the wall street journal was the one that yeah. published this about uh yeah. false story about elon cheating uh or elon yeah cheating with the wife of sergey sergey right uh, yeah oh, it's you know, wall it's street crazy. journal so yeah i'm very curious where you're gonna head with that that's a great story that you know very well um all right, so a little bit, a couple of fun conversation questions if you're okay with it. So what's, yeah. we talked a little bit, what's your goal by the end of the decade? Oh my gosh. So that is so far eight away. years from now. Yeah, it's too far away, huh? <laughs> Tell me don't um, think about you it. You know what? I would like to be married with kids. Um, oh, okay. Right now I'm single. I just sure. turned 30. Yeah. So um, I would like a family and I'm pretty confident it'll happen within a decade. Um, I think that I would like to have checked off some major countries that are that are in my plans to go to Australia, Japan. Oh, I want to go to Japan so bad. Um, so I, I would like to have seen those places by a decade from now. Yeah. Uh, hopefully have a million subscribers by a decade from now, have a Tesla, but but beyond that, I'm really not like a materialistic person as as much as. Oh yeah, you could tell uh, when you know. said that you want to have a family. I'm envisioning the van, 
traveling yeah. or yeah. nomad life. You're going to be like, hey, everybody, yeah. this is the igloo. We're going to be living in the igloo for the yeah. next three months. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I totally could see it. I totally <laughs> my poor kids. My poor future oh, that's kids. That's a baby. <laughs> They're going to be rock stars. They're going to be rock stars. Yeah, They'll probably rock climbers rock from the beginning. Hey, uh, yeah. you know, so you can tell your spouse, carry the baby. I've got to like. <laughs> 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 yes, that would be nice if the spouse climbs too. Not yeah. necessary, but at least like support me or try yeah, it once. Yeah. All right. What is the uh, most unexpected piece of advice that you've ever received? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Whoa unexpected oh my god oh wow um yeah i wouldn't even know how to answer that myself it's a tough one you need to reflect i think it takes a long time yeah yeah that that one that one i have to think about i don't even know <laughs> maybe a future interview you can answer that question yeah that's a good question uh, though <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could ask yourself a future, your future self, if you can ask your future self, let's say the Ellie in 2030, what question would you ask? Um, are you happy and are mm -hmm. you still like protecting your time and mm -hmm. your mission and staying true to yourself? Nice. Because you nice. better be. Because you better be. Well, that is what I think. Uh, what you're doing right we talked about it yeah. you're making your first steps to be your true authentic self you're deciding now the time where to go you combine your travel you love your travels and adventures so much like where in the world did you say japan um i love japan my family fell yeah. in love with japan we don't want to visit any other place but japan really? <laughs> we just got a weird yeah i oh i don't God. know why but i we just really really loved it that will take a whole uh yeah we have to go to some <laughs> part of your event and I'll explain it to you one day, but it's just so much oh, why we yeah. loved it so much. Yeah. I would love to go. And yeah. you know, rumor is they might open a giga factory there. Yes. So yeah. I'm definitely going then. It's not rumor. It's only coming from one person and that's Warren Redvich. <laughs> You've been hanging out with him too much. <laughs> no, but I, I agree with that. Osaka is it, but yeah, he's repeating that over and over again. He'll be right. Uh, he'll be right. But I'm just, yeah. it's not a rumor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Warren. Warren's funny. Uh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Ellie. Really appreciate yeah. this. Everyone, please follow Ellie on YouTube as, of course, Ellie in Space. She has a second yes. channel, Ellie Vated. Vated. Yes. Perfect because you're a rock climber. Yeah. Uh, and on Twitter, she is at E Sheriff TV, E S H E R R I F, correct? TV. Uh, E S H E Sheriff. So E S H E R I F F T V. One fine. One one R one R two F Sheriff. Yes. Hey, a lot of people get those confused. So it's okay. I should not get that confused, but okay. <laughs> so hopefully you got a little bit brighter. And if you did, please, you know, uh, give me a bit of a like and a follow as well. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching.